Hello there, welcome back to Blue Harvest for Toys and on today's video I'm going to be taking you back to the 1970s. The 1970s saw the introduction of some sensational toys that have stayed with us for the last 50 years. Iconic toys from films and TV series with cult followings sometimes are selling for tens of thousands of pounds Super 70s indeed. Video games first came into our lives in the 1970s. The concept had been around since August 1966 with Ralph H. Bayer designing the hardware for such a thing. Odyssey, manufactured by Magnavox, is said to be the first commercial home video game console. With lots of wires, control knobs and joysticks, we were all fascinated by the fun of battling dots backwards and forwards across the television screen, or landing a little aircraft on a clear runway after destroying a skyline of buildings. From those early consoles, things as we know quickly developed as technology improved to the amazing standards we see today. As for those early Atari consoles and the like, perhaps they'll be valued in toy museums, but as collector's items, they don't seem to have a great deal of value. Plenty of toys in the 1970s have still have great value, however. The 1970s were the era of action figures for the many television series that became so popular. The Six Million Dollar Man, Bionic Woman, Charlie's Angels, Sasuke Notch, Forty Towers, were name a few. As soft toys became collectible, the cartoons of the time, such as Dick Dastardly and Muttley, which, although came out in the originally in the 1960s, were repeated throughout the 1970s, and the episodes were still being enjoyed by today's generation. Doctor Who had been sending kids scurrying off behind the sofa since 1963, and the show continued to gather fans with the arrival of John Pertwee as the third Doctor and Tom Baker as a fourth. Plastic figures, models of TARDIS and Daleks, amongst other aliens, became the prized possession of countless youngsters, who for many had continued to be fans through to the present day. For some, collecting Doctor Who memorabilia has been a lucrative move. A Doctor Who Dalek made in 1966 was sold off by a private British collector in 2016. It was one of 67 items on sale, beating off bids from around the world. It sold to a London collector for £38,500, with the entire collecting fetching £90,000 in total. Not quite in the league, but nevertheless showing the value of the rare Doctor Who toys, was the 7-inch bendy rubber Dalek produced in the mid-1960s. At the time, it could have cost 10 shilling sixpence, and usually played with until it fell apart. However, one that survived fetched £1,500 an auction 50 years later. The original American TV series Star Trek, created by Gene Roddenberry, which had run from 66 to 69 in the US, gathered British fans through the original series being shown over here and the subsequent Star Trek revival in the late 70s and beyond. Actual props from Star Trek have fetched tens of thousands of pounds in auction over the years, according to Profiles in History, who specialise in auctioning Hollywood memorabilia. Two top selling items have been Mr. Spock's Season 3 Kitunic which sold for $123,000 in 2003, and the command chair and platform from the original series, which sold for $304,750 a year later. While a full working model of the Starship Enterprise, with internal neon lighting, was sold at Christie's in 2006 for £452,000. The 1970s also saw the launch of the phenomenal Star Wars created by George Lucas, introducing us to the most wonderful characters of Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Princess Leia, Chewbacca, C-3PO, Atul Edu, Stormtroopers, Boba Fett and other classic characters and their spaceships. In 2020, the Star Wars franchise was estimated at $70 billion, making it the fifth highest grossing media franchise of all time. The Guinness Book of World Records reports that the most expensive Star Wars action figure sold at an auction was a Boba Fett rocket firing action figure which sold for £144,939. It was auctioned by Higgs Auction in November 2019. It was a prototype rocket firing Boba Fett made by toy company Kenner in 1979 but never released. Most of the prototypes have been destroyed in the factory and only a handful have ever come onto the market. Kenner's decision to abandon the production of the Obi-Wan Kenobi figure with double telescoping lightsaber also resulted in a massive sale at Hakes auction in 2017, where the toy fetched £58,000. The company stopped production because of the safety issue of the telescope 
This, along with the fact that there was one of only a few left in the box with the hole punched at the top, aided the high bids on the item. Similarly, a Luke Skywalker box figure, also with a double telescope in lightsaber, made a big box auction, fetching £19,000. The 1970s also saw the launch of one of the best selling toys of all time, the Rubik's Cube. This 3D puzzle was invented in 1974 by Hungarian sculptor and professor of architecture Erno Rubiks and originally called the Magic Cube. When Erno first made it, he didn't actually know how to solve it and it took him about a month to work it out. With 6 coloured sides, 27 pieces and 54 outer surfaces, there are over 43 squintillion different possible configurations. I thought it said that every single position of the Rubik's Cube can be solved in 20 moves or less. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the fastest time to achieve to solve a Rubik's Cube stands at 4.22 seconds, achieved by Felix Zemdex. More than 350 million Rubik's Cubes have been sold to date. Other fun toys that emerged in the 1970s included Weebles. Do you remember the catchphrase, Weebles wobble but they don't fall down? They had been wobbling since 1971. Connect 4 officially emerged on the toy market in 1974. And the hungry hippos had been noisily snapping up those white balls since 1970. The Muppet Show came into the British television from America in 1976 and 1981. And they had been created by Jim Henson in 1955. They had been rising in fame through adverts, late night TV and appearances on Sesame Street. The show won numerous awards and in 1979 came the Muppet Movie. The iconic characters such as Kermit the Frog, Miss Piggy, Animal, Fuzzy Bear and Gonzo have inspired collectors for more than 40 years. Meanwhile, Dinky Toys had been manufacturing the entire spectrum of vehicles, real and fictitious from passenger, sports and racing cars to buses, farm vehicles, military emergency vehicles, airplanes, spacecraft and vehicles from TV series. But despite all that, they couldn't compete with Corgi and Dinky Toy ceased production in the 1970s. Corgi continued their successful production of rally cars, film and TV related cars and more, and in 1970 introduced the Whizwheel range. Both Dinky and Corgi had seen amazing sales of rare models over the years. A pre-war Dinky WE Boyce delivery van was sold at a Vectix auction in 1994. On the model railway scene, Z-Scale Railways was introduced in Marklin 1972 at the Nuremberg Toy Fair. Marklin's head design engineer, Helmut Killian, was the man behind the idea calling it the Z-Scale as it was the last letter of the German and English alphabets and there never would be a smaller commercial model railway scale. In 1970, a Macklin Z-scale locomotive pulling six coaches made its entry into the Guinness Book of World Records by running non-stop for 1,219 hours and travelling the distance of 720 kilometres, which is 450 miles, before the train stopped due to failure of the motor. The 1970s certainly was a decade for some iconic collectible toys. So there you go, a little look back at the 1970s. If there's anything that I missed out, I know there's a lot, please put it in the comments below and I'll do a follow-up and talk about the things that I collected in the 1970s and 1980s. But until then, thank you for watching. Please check out all my other content. Until the next time, with the toys, here with you.